Hey everybody, welcome back. I hope you guys had a great week and are ready for Free Tip Friday, installment number two. My name is Garrett Hartle and you're watching Reach Out Reptiles. In this little video segment, I want to just give you guys some tips, maybe some share some philosophy on keeping superdorf reticulated pythons that I've learned over the years. Um, but a lot of these tips will probably apply to other species as well or other scenarios in life, I don't know, motivational topics, romance, you know, however you guys want to use them, feel free. Uh, but to start off, last week I asked you guys to leave some comments below for some free tips that you would like. So let's read through some of these, and you guys out there too, if you want to leave comments on this video for the coming weeks, that will give me some great ideas for some tips that you guys would like to actually hear me share. Okay, let's see. Uh, SoCal Herps, excellent job with the video. Let's talk feeding and keeping our snakes at a proper weight. Really important for super dwarfs. Here we have uh, Jonathan Watkins. Thanks for commenting. I need tips for building some bigger enclosures. Uh, Robin Budd, thanks for the comment. Says, how about probe placements? Okay, that that uh, is a good one. I, I think there was another one. Yeah, here from DER Reptiles. How about tips on what substrates and the heat sources you use. Blah, blah, blah. Ooh, Chris says, with mating season going on, it'd be really great to see how to introduce males. I feel this can be treacherous territory for some and often oversimplified. So uh, yeah, that's a that's an awesome one. And that might be one for next week because we are doing some, some pairings here pretty soon. Um, but here's the one that, uh, that, guys, I'm sorry, I have to go with if you notice the name of the commenter, Ashley Hartle, this is the wife. She says, you should talk about our taming and training methods. So this Friday is gonna be about hook training, tap training, handling techniques, and the philosophy behind kind of getting your animal acclimated to what it is that you do in your home. For instance, you open a cage once a week and you throw a, uh, a feeder item in there, let's say, for these baby pythons. Every time you open that cage, what are they gonna think? Oh, home? Food? What's that? Where is that? Give it to me. Give it to me. They have heat pits to guide their strike. And let's say, you know, every other time you're opening the cage, you're either feeding it or sometimes you're dropping your nice warm hand in there and they see that the same with their heat pits and you get bit, which is unpleasant, harmless, but unpleasant. So for hook training, tap training, you're going to need an object. Okay. Let me show you my high tech snake training hook. Here it is. I don't know if you can even see it. It's got the same size there, or same shape there, obviously a different size, and obviously very crudely made out of a coat hanger. But that doesn't matter. In fact, it doesn't even need to be a hook. A lot of times, if I don't have my hook handy and I'm going through the rack and I need to, I'll use my temperature gun and just pet them on the head with that. It's, it's anything that's like a, an object that's not your squishy fingers to bite that you can actually tap them and pet them with. To, to get them out of that feed response and moving on to something else. Let me show you exactly what I mean, okay? Okay, so here we are in front of the baby racks and uh, I'm gonna pull this little girl out. She loves to eat, she's always thinking about food. We're just gonna pull the tub and I want you guys to watch for that behavior of her popping her head up, expecting and looking for food, okay? And then I'll show you exactly what we're doing with this hook. Are we hooking them, are we gouging them? What is it that we're doing? So. Stay tuned and let's check this out. Okay, here we go. Shh. So now this is the animal I'm actually gonna use this on, but I'm gonna go through the rack and open a bunch of tubs here because this is probably what it sounds like when it's feeding time. Okay, so now she's probably primed and ready because she's heard everyone coming through. She's expecting her food. Here we go. Oh, look at that. She's already up at the front of her tub. Oh no, it's all bleached out. Hold on, we can get better here. There she is, popped up front. Okay, time for our little hook training or tap training. You can see her up, high alert, flicking around. Whoa, look at that. Touch her with a hook, in she goes. She immediately knows that it's not time for food. Now, she's pretty well trained, but if you had one that wasn't, you're just gonna pat them on the head. And the idea is, before you pick them up, you wanna get them moving away you can see how i with the shape of that hook i can kind of just manipulate her wherever i need to now that she's moving away i can pick her up with the hook but i really don't need to because she never really wanted to bite me in the first place all she ever wanted to do was eat some food 
So once I told her that she's not eating food, she was up at the front of the rack, now she's a total sweetheart. I can be as warm-blooded as I want to in her presence, and she doesn't care at all. Because we've broken that concentration. You can see it real clearly and instantaneously with her. Sorry, I had to edit that out. There was a huge snake fart going on in the background. I don't have anybody over here that's eager to strike. Look at that. I'm willing to sacrifice, you know, limb and finger comfort for you guys, but the snakes are just kind of proving how well behaved they are. Anyways, that's kind of a testament um, to how much it helps to really acclimate these guys beyond just taking care of them. Now, there is a, a special program that we put through some of our babies and uh, this is kind of my daughter's lemonade stand idea and she decided of her own accord that uh, customers would not want to have a bitey snake and the kind of handling that a child gives a snake is the kind I want to recommend to you guys and I'll show you exactly what I mean okay let's go grab Riley okay guys this is Riley Riley can you say hi everybody hi everybody all right so Riley has a very specific snake training program by which she takes on the responsibility of all the handling and, and acclimating of new snakes for customers that want to it's ten dollars right Riley right ten dollars ten dollars so if you ever buy a snake from reach out reptiles and you want Riley working on it say hi Riley Hi. then send an extra ten dollars and she will give them the special treatment what is it that you like to do with them to help train them? What are some things that you want to make sure that these snakes can do? Eat good. Eat good, yeah, but that's kind of my job, don't you think? What do you do when you come down? Well, maybe we should just show them. You want to show them? Yeah. Okay, say, come on, guys, we'll show you. Come on, guys, we'll show you. Okay, right. guys, here we are. I got to kind of get down here. Hold on. Wait. Okay, so you can see our flashy sticker there. That's Riley's sticker. That means this is one of her snakes that uh, that she's working on. Now this is a, a pure super dwarf baby that was just hatched Christmas Day. So um, Riley, why don't you show us how you use the snake hook? Okay, so we're gonna pull him out. Oh, she must be hiding. If she's hiding, she's probably not gonna do that. But this is their hide slash shelf that we use inside the tubs. Okay, better with the hook just to make sure that they're not in uh, feed mode. There you go. Yeah, and then we don't even need this anymore. It's okay. And we very professionally... Hold both sides. Hold both sides. You wanna kind of hold one hand on the head, not really on the head, next to the head. Not really on the head. And the one next to the tail. Mm -hmm. And it likes to mostly wrap its, mostly times it wraps its um, tail, like mm -hmm. wrap its tail. Up. We call that anchoring. Yeah, they like to anchor on one point to feel safe. Super dwarfs aren't very good at it. They like to flop out onto the floor, don't they? Yeah. And they're pretty wiggly. Yeah. Now, the one thing I want you guys to notice is that she is not super professionally doing anything with this snake. All she's doing is handling it, and she's handling it kind of haphazardly. It's this is actually what I recommend because if the snake, if you handle a snake, let's pull one out here. If all I ever do is handle a snake like, oh baby, oh be careful, oh don't, don't, don't fall, you know, and I'm freaking out and stuff like that, the snake's going to freak out and stuff all the time too. Or it's going to be used to being handled so perfectly, so carefully that if anything does happen, it'll spook and, and spooky snakes snap at you just like a spooky horse and kick at you um and so you don't want them to spook so you want to desensitize them oh look i'm not even holding with two hands not even holding with two hands don't let it escape eh. so yeah we just want to kind of not okay. even holding with two hands haphazardly <laughs> hang on to them because they become desensitized if a small child can do this and desensitize the snake then you guys can do it Hey, Riley, let me, show me what you do that you're most proud of when a snake's really tame. What do you, where can you touch it? On the head. On the head. This is her own secret recipe. I'm giving you all the secrets now. This is worth $10, so there you go. She can even pet it on the head without it biting you, which might seem silly, but that's actually kind of important. Um, I can a lot put of it snakes, on the nose. Let's see. It'll definitely bite you. 
even pet it on the nose. Now, you know, it might look like we're kind of manhandling the snake a little bit, but we're obviously not doing anything to injure it. But when you desensitize an animal, you don't want them to be head shy. You don't want them to be weird about any one thing because you might have to use that someday. Let's say the snake injures its its face or has a, a problem with its tooth, you know. We want to be able to do things like this where, you know, it's used to having its mouth opened. You know, a lot of times when I'm working with these, this guy's so small, this is hard to do. I'll even put my finger inside the mouth and uh, and just let it get used to it. So, you know, and it it's trying to get away. You could touch them. I don't know if you know this, but snakes have scales over their eyes. So when you touch their eye, it's not really touching their eye. So we'll pet them on the eye. We'll look at it. We'll turn them upside down. Right, Riley? Right. Yeah. Just make sure you be very gentle with them. Don't squeeze them much. And Don't squeeze them. Yeah. And look, you want when you put your hand on the tail and the head and he's squaggling, usually I see snakes that I hold squaggle all over the place. We do a lot of squaggle prevention. You wanna make sure you you wanna make sure that you have to gently you don't have to like tightly hold it so it can't squaggle around. Just let it slide arm. through your hands. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. And one last thing I want to leave you guys with is that always leave on a good note. Uh, so if the if the animal has bitten you or something like that, it's kind of like the old saying again with the horse analogies. For some reason, you got to get back on once you're bucked off. So you know, pick it up, calm them down a little bit. And uh, gently put him back in its cage. Let's give this girl her hide back. And and I want to tell you one more thing. Okay. That these snakes, snakes scraggle a lot, but you can't just let it go because it's scraggling a lot. Even when it bites you, you have to say it's okay. Just say it's okay. And we're going to go ahead and just let her go back into her cage there. Now, why are you tickling it, Riley? It won't go off my hand. Oh, did you guys know snakes are ticklish? You tickle them right back into their cage. She's anchoring now, huh? Yep, very tightly. I don't know. I cut her <laughs> off. It's like I'm the bar now. You're the bar, huh? All right, so I'm let's go ahead and pull her off. Again, obviously, you don't want to do anything that's going to hurt your snake, but you don't yeah, have. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to be so delicate with them. Ah, not taking a bath. That any kind of sudden or or slightly harsh movement freaks them out. Watch the tail. In she goes. Yeah. All right. And high five. Mission accomplished. Okay. So yeah. And then you know the big thing is you want to get them used to coming in and out. So what Riley does is she takes them out a bunch of times every day, just for a few minutes, about as long as as we've showed you. But they get acclimated to coming in and out all the time. Take them outside, give them a swim in the bathtub, whatever you and guys... And you can take it outside if you have a jungle gym, you can let them climb for a while. We, we do let our snakes get exercise on the jungle gyms. <laughs> but yeah, whatever you guys are going to do with them, do with them and just, and just move right ahead. Hey, can you tell everybody good luck? Good luck. Well, I hope that helped you guys out. Some of the philosophy behind handling the snakes, just don't do it too uh, sensitively. Go ahead and do with them what you need to do with them. Do it often, do it regularly. Gave you some tips on hook and tap training. And uh, and you saw how Riley did it. Watch, rewatch that part of the video a bunch of times. You can see her hand movements are kind of like this. That's the way you want to do it if you want to desensitize your snake. So please subscribe so you can see these videos every week and comment down below. Maybe next week will be your tip. Until then, you guys have a great weekend. There you go. There he is. Woo! Alright, can you say goodbye, everybody? Goodbye. Goodbye.